All right, before I start this video, I want to I want to tell you guys that this is easily one of the biggest projects I've been working on for the channel. I've been working on this since mid-summer, so about like, I'd say three months, roughly like, roughly on like three months right now. So like two to three months. So this is, this is a pretty big, and also the thing is, I actually wanted to work on this for longer, but I decided not to because season six is gonna start in like four days. So, and I wanna get this video out before season six, cause then if I waited till then, I would have way too much on my plate and I just don't wanna deal with that. So that's why I'm doing it now. So uh, hey guys, Yelka Belts here, and uh, this is the biggest, probably one of, the, again, one of the biggest videos. A sort of review slash impression slash analysis. I don't really know what you call it. I, review slash impression slash and something like that of Fortnite, the currently the most popular game in the world. Uh, no, no matter what clickbait, whatever, despite what clickbait people will tell you. <laughs> so the thing is, is that, well, well, first off, in case you're wondering, if I, if sometimes I look up here, it's because, uh, I, I, it's because there's just so many, there's so much freaking to it. So, uh, in fact, I just forgot to add a section there. My bad. So, uh, I, I, I just, like, jeez, this, this video is gonna be a long one, so, uh, before we start, I guess, take your time right now to, you know, fill up some popcorn, you know, get some salt, you know, do, do something, you know, you know, cause, like, Jesus Christ, this, this is gonna be a, a long video, like, honestly, this is gonna be a, a, a long video, okay? So honestly, so 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 before we start, uh, if you know, so before we start, another big thing is that this video will only be talking about uh, the the battle royale. Save the world is not going to be brought up. And then uh, one last thing, uh, uh, anything. Of course, this game's constantly changing, so anything I say right now will definitely change, especially considering the fact again, season six coming out is coming out. So what is Fortnite? Well, Fortnite is a 100 okay sorry i need to pull up there fortnite is a 100 player game where you and 99 other people jump into a battle bus and fall down into a location with your glider or free falling and you go in collect weapons and stuff you know weapons grenades all types of stuff to you know kill you know to kill your opponents and be the number one victory royale pretty basic you know, and I can see why this game is pretty popular, but more on that later. Uh, now, here's, so it sounds simple, but it's actually kind of complicated, maybe a little bit too much. So basically, every everybody starts with nothing, except for a pickaxe and a glider, but the glider doesn't show up unless you're playing in Soaring, but well, more, on, more on the game was later. Uh, yeah, actually, I should add that real quick. So, so that's the thing. Uh, so the so the uh, okay so so as you collect weapons and there are five different types of weapon varieties there are you know the, there's there's gray uncommon you know, gray is common green is uncommon blue is rare purple is epic and gold is legendary so pretty basic and honestly it's pretty, it's it's makes sense and it's not just like guns and stuff because you know you do find guns a, a lot of varieties like you know uh, like you know, just spam weapons, uh, more like more sh more one shot sniper rifles, r rocket launchers, that stuff. Uh, and but but on top of that, you also get to find a bunch of other stuff. For example, you find stuff like grapplers, like grappling hooks. You find like uh, golf carts. You can do all that. And another one I'll get into later, which is really cool. I actually like it. And uh, the thing is, uh, which is actually a good thing to have these mobility-based items, because one of my biggest complaints is you that know, sometimes when I'm playing the game, I literally just run. I'm just running, and you're and nobody else is coming. Like, nobody is there. I don't see anyone. So, <coughs> sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, still have a bit of a throat ache. So, it's nice to have this type of... Uh, it's nice it's nice to have this like, these you can get a move on now of course they're not unlimited uh the golf carts can break and the grappler only has 15 uses per whatever and they can't be restored unless you find a new one which is annoying but whatever 
and then after that, uh, then after that, and of course, and of course, how it works is that Fortnite has uh, different game modes. Basically, there's solo, then there's duos, and then there's squads. Solo's for one player, duos for two players, and then squads for three and four. You you add people to your squad by their friends list, and the friend list uses an epic uses your Epic Games account. So you gotta add them to your friends list. Uh, if you're playing on consoles, there's an option to link all your everyone who plays Fortnite on your friend list on your Xbox, PlayStation, or Switch friend list, and then put them as Epic Games friends, which is really useful, by the way. So there's that. And uh, last but not, and then also one last another thing is uh, is the storm. Basically, as as the game continues on, the storm gets there will be a big storm and. It, and the window without the storm will get smaller and smaller. If you're in the storm, you start taking damage and the damage increases per second, the, the, small, the smaller and smaller open space there is. And, and in fact, in, fa in fact, in fact uh, when it gets really small, it starts moving into areas that were already covered by the storm. And yeah, so that's how it works. <coughs> Sorry about that. And then as, <clears throat> So as for weapons, there are a lot of variety. Uh, now the thing is, is that Fortnite has a way of what they call vaulting, where sometimes they take a weapon and they just don't have it in the game anymore. Uh, there are a couple weapons that have been vaulted. Unfortunately, one of my favorites, the drum gun, was vaulted. And there were some other ones, like a revolver, which I never really used. They were garbage. Yeah, so there are a bunch of varieties. There's miniguns, which are good for late game. There's... There's just assault rifles which are good for every time, honestly. There's some machine guns which are mostly good for early game, mid game. Uh, not as useful as late game, but still. And there's rocket launchers which are great for destroying structures as the thing is everyone can build. And the thing how it works is that you break, you use your pickaxe to break stuff and you harvest resources like Minecraft. But you use them to, to build up, uh, build just like, build just like, just pieces. Uh, you can build like a wall, a ramp, a, I don't really know what you call the fourth one. It's like a pyramid, a mini pyramid. I don't know. And, and, and mats as, as people call them, which are just flooring. Yeah. I think, I think it's really cool. And I have seen a lot of people go nuts with them. So I, I think, I think that's really cool. And, uh, yeah. So again, and, I, and of course you can play with friends, uh, more on that later, uh, but as for other stuff, um, in, in addition to, now the thing is how you get weapons. Sometimes they will be on the ground, you know, just, you just pick them up, you know, and, and this also goes for non-weapons, which includes stuff like bandages, shields, which gives you more health, and then other stuff, and then other stuff that aren't really fall into either of those categories, like grenades, which come in different varieties. Like for example, there's a remote one, there's a stink bomb, which just releases a bunch of gas, the clinger, which attaches the walls and players. And then there's just standard grenades. And then also on top of that, there's also uh, other stuff like the Port of Fort and Port of Fortress, which just spawn mini, just spawn some pre-made structures, which are really fun by the way. And uh, also, but on top of that, uh, in, in order to find some, the best way to find some of them is through chests. You can also get them through vending machines, although vending machines are pretty useless since most of the time when you find one, you're either already already decked out so you don't really need them or you don't have enough materials since they cost materials to use vending machines. So I, I don't recommend it. Uh, only, in few, only in a few particular circumstances do I use vending machines. Uh, but you can also get them... You can also get them through chest. Uh, you can also find them through supply drops and llamas, which are, uh, llamas are extremely rare. Uh, they come with basically a, a crap ton of materials. However, they never come with weapons. If you, I think, except for maybe grenades, but they never come with weapons unless grenades and traps, which by the way, there are different types of traps. There are damage traps, bounce traps, uh, and also like the launch pads and like campfires, which heal health. And launch pads are used. Uh, basically, how it works. Launch pads. Basically, they re they send you back up into the air where you can redeploy your lighter and go somewhere else. Really good for travel. Again, we're following the whole golf carts and grappler situation. Uh, although they are the rarest trap, if that makes any sense. I should I could have worded that better in hindsight, but whatever. We're moving on. Uh, 
and on top of that, uh, <coughs> and on top of that, uh, new to the season five, which I'll be focusing more on se mostly in season five. I did play some season four, but I won't be talking about it a whole lot. I'll just be focusing on season five since that's the version of this video. Even though again. It's four days left until season six comes out. Right now in season five, we have rifts, which are basically cracks in, cracks in the sky, which you can jump into and basically act as a land, as a land-made preset launch pads. After entering one, other people can enter it for a limited time, but then actually after that time period, it disappears. It just snapped. Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. Oh no. All right, uh, I'll get into more Thanos later. Not really, but wrist can be used again to travel, which is really nice. Uh, locate now. As for the locations, uh, as for the location you'll have to be traveling to, Fortnite has a bunch of locations, which is really cool. And while there are some unnamed ones, like uh, like this Viking town, which should be named in my opinion, like I don't know why it's not named. And like there's also like a bunch of other stuff, like a bunch of like cool structures, like a racetrack and a uh, nice old Mexican town. Uh, so. Uh, in addition to some unnamed locations, again, a few of which I do believe should get names. Uh, there are some named locations. Name locations are usually the areas people, most people go to. They generally have a lot of loot and generally also just are just really good to travel to. So, uh, so we'll be starting from not the top. This has sort of been a weird way. This sort of laid out really weird. So Junk Junction, Junk Junction is basically just a junk house with a lot of metal, with a lot of, a good way to farm metal, and not really much in chests in my opinion. Good resources place. Uh, Tomato Temple, originally this was Tomato Town, which was just a pretty useless town. Uh, in fact, the house to the right, was, the house to the left was, was more useful. But recently it was turned into Tomato Temple, a giant, like, sort of, you know, jungly setting with the with with uh, our lord and with our with a false prophet tomato got tomato head which i do not believe him since shrek easily defeats him but back to, but enough for that religious stuff uh it, tomato temple is awesome by the way it has a bunch of chests a bunch of ammo boxes if i have to mention uh ammo boxes are just like littered throughout the entire map giving you ammo uh when you open them up which is really nice so Obviously, your Tomato Temple is just a really nice place to be, honestly. And there's still a little bit of Tomato Town in there, so if you missed that, then there you go. Uh, and then also, uh, Fatal. F and then next up is Fatal Fields. Fatal Fields was removed in season four, uh, but Fatal Fields was really just. Wait, no, not Fatal Fields. Oh my god, I hate myself. No, uh, Fatal Fields is still around. My bad. Fatal Fields is pretty, pretty basic. Uh, pretty basic. Oh, so it's not really that special, but it's pretty good loot. Lazy Links. Lazy Links is a really fun place. It's like this Playboy rich millionaire mansion. It's really nice, and it's also really easy to get golf carts there. Thing is, Lazy Links replaced an area in Season 4 known as Anarchy Acres. Remember, I mistake Anarchy Acres for Fate of Fields. They're basically the same thing. Like, there's no reason to have both. Like, it, was, it isn't a good move to be Lazy Links. Anarchy Acres is just another Fatal Fields. Wailing Woods. Wailing Woods really only has one structure in the middle and just has a bunch, just an endless amount of trees and nothing else. I mean, it's good for wood, but that's about it. Besides, if you want wood, I feel like Lonely Lodge, Lonely Lodge, the next area suffice. It's basically like this old school cabin, which is also pretty nice. And a, and a, and a tower you'll probably never get the loot from because everybody goes there. I'm gonna go to Lonely Lodge anyways. Not many people go to Lonely Lodge. Uh, then Retail Row, next to it, well, to the west of it, is Retail Row. Uh, Retail Row is a pretty cool place. Uh, uh, it's not, it's a good, it's just a right amount of loot. This is what I call a balanced Fortnite area. The, this is like, this is what all areas should thrive to be. Dusty, Di next up to the west, again, Dusty Divot. Dusty Divot was destroyed by a meteor that landed in season four, and and now it's season five become more jungly. I know it's kind of, that sounds kind of redundant with so we have Tomato Temple, but still, Dusty Divot came before Tomato Temple. And uh, yeah. Now before Dusty Divot, there was originally Dusty Depot, which is three apartments, not really anything special. Dusty Depot did act, some of Dusty Depot actually did survive the crash when Dusty Depot turned into Dusty Divot. And just recently it got spruced up a bit, which looks really nice. It's sort of like, it's basically a diner, which is really good. Cause welcome to diner, drive into trash. 
follow me around the country. I'll go to Haunted Hills next. So Haunted Hills. Uh, Haunted Hills is a pretty cool location. Very spooky, spooky, scary skeletons gonna shiver down your spine. Uh, actually, it's, a, it's pretty underrated, honestly, when it comes to loot. It has a lot of good loot, and I feel like more people should travel there, honestly. But people are probably too busy with Tilted Towers, because because according to a lot of people, Tilted Towers is the most traveled Fortnite location. It's a giant city with a lot of structures, including a recent one, RIP, and uh, and has a bunch of chests, like chests pretty much everywhere, like at least at least like 30 or 40 chests in that area, just that one area, like 50 or something. It's ridiculous. And, and as a result, a lot of people go there. Also, if you're playing on Switch and mobile, then definitely go there. Because if, if you want to see that frame rate drop, ooh, it becomes it becomes a freaking PowerPoint presentation there. Especially in 50 v 50 which I'll talk about later, okay? So, yeah. So 50 v 50 obviously. And then next up, uh, over north-ish, is Pleasant Park. Pleasant Park is a... Uh, it's just a pretty nice, it's just a pretty normal neighborhood with a soccer field. Nothing really special there. It's it's good, it's good for loot, but nothing remark nothing like game changing. Snobby Shores is just for rich, like wealth, like above average wealth people. It's just four houses. And they look pretty nice. Uh I do wish it was a little bit more. It's like a, like at least maybe like one more house would have really sold it for me. But whatever. And then next up, uh, like go south, southeast of it. Southeast is is Greasy Grove. Greasy Grove is home to the Durr Burger, which is supposed to be like a the alternative to Tomato, Tomato Town. So if you don't like tomatoes, maybe burgers. Personally, I prefer burgers, but I guess the Fortnite devs prefer tomatoes. It has a pretty good loot. I'd say it's about as balanced as Retail Row. Then next up is Shifty Staff. Shafts, bleh, sorry, it, which is east of Greasy Grove. Uh, I'd say it's also pretty balanced. I'd say maybe, again, to a lesser extent. It also has two houses to the side of it, which I also think are pretty good. It has a good amount of loot, uh, especially, and it has a pretty good underground for um, for good battles. It's a pretty good battle spot, honestly. Flesh Factory. Oh, I almost never go here. Really, the only times I frequently go here are either because of a challenge, like the birthday cakes, or the, or the battle stars, or like, or if it's like the, or or if it's like the location of the final circle. So, which is almost never the case because it's like off to the side of the map, and usually the circle ends up in the middle, generally. Not all the time, but generally. Uh, Lucky landing. Uh, the next is the Lucky Landing. Lucky Landing is like this Chinese-inspired area. It's a really nice place. I really like it. It has a good amount of loot. I, I do feel like it's also a little bit underrated. Probably because it's like it's like the very south of the map. Like, it's ridiculous. The next up, uh, going north, north of Fatal Fields, is Salty Springs. Salty Springs is, I feel like, I feel like it's, it could use a few more, like maybe one or two more houses, but it's a pretty good location. Uh, also, there's a pretty cool secret lair, by the way. Really cool in, in the in the south in the in the southwest in the northwest house, farthest northwest house. So yeah, and the next up is Paradise Palms. Paradise Palms was added into uh, into into a season five, replacing Moisey Myers, which I I think I only dropped there once before season five started. I didn't really play a lot of season four, so I think I only dropped there like once or twice. So. So I can't really say much about snob, about Moisey Myers, but I can't say a lot about Paradise Palms. Paradise Palms is awesome. It's a nice beach location. Feels like something out of G out of Fast and Furious or GTA, you know? Or it might just be I don't know. It it just feels like a really cool location. It's pretty populated, but it's still really cool. And then uh, last but not least is uh, Loot Lake. I saved this for last because for a very particular reason. Now if you now, now, normally Loot Lake uh, is a is a big is a really is is a pretty big okay big water a lot of water. Now, when you step in the water, you you get a lot of slow movement as pretty much every game should could. Uh, it also has a house in the center, and uh, but the, my biggest problem is that there's just too much water. Like 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 forget Aura, like forget Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. This is too much water. 
like seriously not a lot of structures so not a lot of loot i mean there's a lot of good loot we do one place with a lot of good loot is the center house but even then after you finish like after you finish looting it you gotta move your way move your slow self all the way through the water which is so annoying i, I try to avoid this place as much as i can but until now because yesterday uh the because yesterday uh something very big happened which is all ties in to the cube basically uh halfway through season five the cube spawned in the desert and basically it was moving around the pretty much almost the entire map so so how it worked is that it, it was moving around it was moving it first moved over to salt to fatal fields which spawned a it spawned an anti-gravity section, which the anti-gravity sections are really great. I highly recommend using a launch pad, especially in there. But the thing is, they, it was placing in various locations. So they, of course they placed one uh, northwest of Fatal Fields, placed one east of, Gre east of Greasy Grove. They placed one, I'm sorry, my bad. Sorry, I just got a little thing there. They placed one uh, between Salty Springs and Dusty Divot. They placed one right next to the retail row. They placed one in Wailing Woods, which, by the way, also destroyed some of the trees because the cube destroyed some of the trees. Placed one uh, south of Lazy Links. They placed one uh, uh, south southwest of Pleasant Park. Redestroyed a building in Tilted Towers, and then finally. It sunk into the ocean of Loot Lake, causing the entire all the water to turn into an anti-gravity bouncy section, which is way more fun, honestly. Like it gives me more of a re way more of a reason, even if it does mean if even if it does have the dusty divot situation where now there's a giant target on the map that everyone's gonna go to. <coughs> so, yeah, that is kind of annoying, but other than that. It, it's really cool. And honestly, now the thing is, there's been rumors that Loot Lake is going to turn into a volcano. I actually kind of want that to not happen just so I can keep bouncing for season six. So, uh, I really hope it doesn't turn into a, it doesn't turn into a uh, bounce house. I really don't. I really hope. But, that is not our end. For as, for as we see, the thing is that the, is that that battle royale while it is the entire game there's different modes to battle royale and uh and and how it works is that these are known as limited time modes limited time modes will never permanently stay solos duos and squads will always stay so so despite these modes sometimes being more arguably more fun than the standard one they won't be around forever they always come they always leave but, some, but most of the time they come back. Uh, so, so what am I talking about? Well, well, well. Obviously, there are different limited time modes. So, uh, I, I'm only going over ones I have played. So, uh, I'm not going over. So, like ones I played. So, I all the ones in season five. So, stuff like the Thanos mode, and other ones like teams of twenty. <coughs> I'm not going over. So th this is all, this is the ones I can come to turn my head. So different game modes. So there was so one of the game modes is steady storm, which is basically just squads, but the storm is closing in from the center and starts from the sides, slowly closing in, and instead of just being randomized and just closing in faster, it's just it's just just coming into the center. So yeah, it's pr I didn't really play a lot of it, although it is kind of fun. And then uh, after that, there was a fly explosive mode for duos and squads. Basically, fly explosives was where uh, you could get jetpacks, which were added in the game previously, but taken out, but then put back into this mode or as an exclusive. Uh, basically, you fly around in your jetpack, and you can, like, use rocket. And the only weapons you can use are grenade launchers and rocket launchers and the guided missile. So you, like, it's basically just an explosive war. And it's actually really fun. It's actually where I got my first win. So, yeah. Then the 50v50 mode, 50v50 mode is probably the, one of the more, more well-known LTMs, uh, and, and it's actually the one that's stuck around a, a lot of time, a long time. Uh, 50v50 is basically where there are two teams of 50s, two battle bosses, and two sides of the map, and basically there's this one meeting area, which is, which Storm closes everywhere else, and then it's just a giant warfare, and, uh, 
Good luck to anyone who gets whose final circle ends up in Tilted Tower. So Jesus Christ, it's gonna be like a low. It's gonna be a lower quality PowerPoint presentation from that point. And then after that, there is also another very popular one, Playground, where basically you can make your very own private island, and you can just screw around, do whatever you want. Nobody else is there. You can build your structures, do whatever you want. Make your make your own cringy machinimas, do whatever you want. Basically, a lot of fun. Can have some good time although you, you got to be on the creative side now recently 50 v 50 has been changed to soaring 50s where basically it's the same thing however you can redeploy your glider and the thing is even more recently they introduced soaring solos which is basically just like solos but with the redeploying glider mechanic which i think are really cool i, I a part of me does wish redeploying gliders was like a standard feature but a, a part of me could see why see why it's it's a mode exclusive and then there was also another mode known as Score Royale, which was basically where instead of being the last man standing, you gotta collect as many points as possible. Where, you know, you gotta, well, you can get points by different means. Like you can do them by getting kills, searching tests, searching, searching just places, eating, eating the apples and mushrooms, doing all of that. And then after that, and then of course it's just really cool. First to 2,000 points wins for solos and then 3,000 for duos. Uh, and then after that, there was the getaway mode, which the getaway mode was really cool. Getaway mode is basically a very different way of playing Fortnite. It was basically, instead of last man standing, <coughs> there is a, there are four safes on the edge of the circle, which is already pre preset by, by, by the time the, the game starts. Uh, there are four safes and you and your squad gotta, gotta work together to secure the safe so you can bring the jewel over to, um, just bring the jewel over and just take the jewel from the safe. Although you gotta take a while to open it, you know? Because you gotta you gotta insert that malware to open up the safe, I guess. I don't know. And then after and then after that you gotta escort the jewel to to the to one of the getaway vans. Uh, there will be three that start that spawn shortly after the jewel's collected, and then one more that spawns after all the other ones disappear. So yeah, you gotta go go to one of the one of the vans and then just it, and then just uh, board it and you win, basically. Because and because there are multiple vans, that means there are gonna be multiple winners. Uh, in squads, there are up to sixteen winners. Duos, it's eight, and solos, it's one. No, no, four. So my bad. So it's really it's a really fun way. I do kind of miss it now, but whatever. And it's just really fun. Honestly, like, uh, and not to mention the jewel itself. While it does take up an extra item slot, and your and your mobility is reduced by ten percent, you are get infinitely regenerating health and shields, meaning you will be defense defensive even if a big target sends that giant glow, which might be distracting to some. And finally, there is showdown. I don't really know much about showdown, honestly. Showdown solos is basically just solos, but with like a ranking system of its own. I don't really know anything about it. I'm sorry. I can't really talk about it. I think that's most of the modes. If I miss any, please don't. Please harass me in the comments, I guess. I don't know. But for, well, that's not really how it goes. You see, how it works is that is that you can that in the game you can customize a lot about your character. By default, you will have one you will have the default skin, obviously, and the default tool, a uh, harvesting tool, a default glider. The default loading screen and stuff like that, and then the and then the default dance, the infamous default dance meme. But every season there is a battle pass. The battle pass is basically where it only costs nine hundred fifty V bucks, so roughly like around ten dollars. And it gives you a bunch of goodies. It gives you it basically gives you one hundred tiers worth of skins and stuff like that. And it's like skins, cosmetics, just all, all the works, challenges and stuff like that. And it's really cool. And what's and the thing is, how, however, however, the thing is, in order to get these stuff, not only have to buy the battle pass, you also gotta after you buy it, you gotta start building up your tiers. Building up tiers can be done in a variety of ways. Either it's through leveling up, which each level up gives you tiers. Um, every five, fifteen, etc., gives you five battle five, five battle stars. Every 10, 20, etc. gives you 10 battle stars. Uh, everything else gives you two battle stars. And every 10 battle stars, you go up a tier. And there are 100 tiers. So you start at tier 1 or tier 25, whatever. I don't know. Whatever. And then, but the thing is, you don't actually, you don't have to buy the battle pass. You can still boost up your tier if you, without the battle pass. And on top of that, 
some a few of the cosmetics are available to free to, to those who don't buy, don't require the battle pass. A few cosmetics. However, however, they however they are just as exclusive as stuff that you can get with Battle Pass. And on top of that, uh, getting up, getting tiers is much harder without the Battle Pass. It, well, not uh, much much harder, but like a little bit, a bit more tedious without the Battle Pass, since uh, you have to, since you know you got to get those Battle Stars, and you don't have nearly as many challenges. You have some challenges, but you don't have nearly as many, and you don't get the EXP boost, which you get by doing Battle Stars challenges. And it's really cool, and you also get a bunch of stuff like uh, skins, uh, pickaxes, gliders, contrails, which are basically like the stuff that comes out of you when you free when you free fall. Uh, gliders, emotes, spray paints, back backpacks, and like banner icons, and e even loading screen, which is really cool. And this is like really awesome, honestly. Some of the skins I do really like. Personal favorite is probably Ragnarok or Sunstrider. Those are those are really great. And Enforcer, I, I think Enforcer is underrated. People don't like Enforcer, but I think it's kind of underrated. Uh, and also on top of that, uh, there's also obviously if, uh, if you don't know what, of course, this costs 950 V bucks. If you don't know what V bucks is, V bucks is basically the in-game currency which you can buy with real money. Uh, there's been a lot of memes and a lot of controversy about V Bucks. But personally, V Bucks are fine. First off, the Battle Pass is only ten dollars. Like that's that's a pretty good deal, honestly. That's 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 cheaper than most indie games, actually. More than some popular indie games. So think about it, it's not that bad. And on top of that, if you don't want to use them in the Battle Pass or you bought or you already bought the Battle Pass, you can use them in the item shop. Basically, basically the item shop every resets every now and then. And, ha and contains a bunch of, and you can buy a bunch of stuff. Like again, skins, uh, <coughs> you can buy skins, uh, tool, like uh, harvesting tools, more dances and you know, more emotes, and then like more, and then more gliders and stuff. So it's pretty cool. <coughs> also, most skins come with back blings too, so they're just free with purchase. So that's really nice. Uh, there are some pretty cool skins. The only skin I've ever bought not kind of starter pack, which we'll get over later. The only skin I've ever bought is wild card, and that's only because I literally didn't know, did not know what to spend with my app store money. So, like, so yeah, if you give me an idea what to spend with my app store money, you can tell me, let me know in the comments. Speaking of starter packs, basically, uh, since I think like since season three, there's always been a starter pack. In season, uh, the first starter pack. Basically, how it works: the starter pack comes with six hundred. It costs five dollars. Comes with six hundred V bucks. And a, a and a and an exclusive skin and an exclusive backplane. Now here's the thing: there is always a starter pack. However, you can only buy the starter pack once, and the skin changes every now and then. So how it works is that okay? Let's so let so so the first starter pack was the Rogue Agent, and then it changed to Wingman, and then it changed to Ace, which I haven't bought yet. I'll buy I'll, my, which I haven't bought actually. Well, the crazy thing, no, the cool thing, well, the good thing is that if you buy one, if you buy the starter pack and then and then it changes to another character, then you can buy the, that one. But again, you can only buy these starter packs once. And then, and then on top of that, uh, they also, <coughs> then on top of that, uh, they're, they're just, I, I just like the skin. The skins look really cool. Oh, in case you're wondering, just as a just as a added bonus, uh, one uh, the exchange rate is one V buck is equal to one cent. Well, one U.S. cent because I live in America. So one V buck equals one U.S. cent, and uh, ironically, that's the same exchange rate as Wii points. Uh, so rest in peace, Wii Shop Channel. So unfortunately, rip. But if you think about it, you're paying five dollars, so you're paying five dollars for the five hundred V bucks, but you get an extra one hundred, which makes six hundred, and then you get the skin. So technically, skins are basically free because you're buying the V bucks, which is really cool. So yeah, again, and yeah, it's really cool. It's pretty interesting. So then after that, uh, and then and and then obviously you can't, and of course Fortnite is, is one of the games that actually has. Crossplay, sort of. Obviously, now the thing is, Fortnite is on basically everything: PC, Xbox One, PS4, mobile, Nintendo Switch, that stuff. Of course, as we all know, Sony wants to be doesn't want to be shared with the toys, 
So they block, of course, block crossplay from Xbox and Switch. And I think the weird thing is that you can still do crossplay with PS4, with PC and mobile, but you can't do it with Xbox One or PS4, with Xbox One or Switch. But the worst part about it is that if you sign into your PS4 account, if, you, if your Epic Games account has used a, has been on a PS4, it is permanently locked down from an Xbox One or Switch. You'll just get an error screen. And honestly, I feel really bad for anyone who had to deal with this. Because there were a lot of there were a lot of PS4 users that were like really mad because they like couldn't use their like main account on the on the Switch. So they could do it on the go. And they had like and then they were forced to make a second account just to play on Switch. Which was really annoying honestly. It's 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 kinda annoying and Sony's not doing well with this crop play. I understand. I get it. I, I understand that this is more Sony's issue, not the game itself. But it's just something I just wanted to point out, since again, this has to do with the game. Yeah, and honestly, and again, it's been Fortnite's been getting constant updates. We're getting season six in, in four days, and on top of that, Nintendo just announced a Switch Fortnite bundle, which comes in exclusive Fortnite skin for Nintendo Switch, which looks pretty cool. Uh, uh, and rip, rip for me because I can't get it. Oof. But now, <coughs> sorry, my bad. But now for a, another part of this section, part two. Jesus Christ, that took forever. But part two, we're going to figure out why is it popular. Now, obviously the biggest reason why it's popular is because it is free. That is a big reason. It's not completely free, of course. Battle Pass, V-Box, Save the World, if you want to count that. Unless, of course, you're playing on Switch or mobile because you just don't get it. Uh, so obviously the biggest thing is that of course it's free. Uh, another big thing is just it's just it's just pretty simple. Like just, it's not like that complicated. I mean the controls can be kind of complicated, but the objective is pretty simple. You're one person, kill everyone else, you win. You don't. Some somebody kills you, you lose. That's basically yeah. I mean again I mentioned obviously score royale and get away, but those are limited time modes and they're currently not up at the time of this recording. If they are back up, I'll check them. But, <coughs> my bad, throw it again. Uh, personally, I think it's just really cool. Uh, personally, I just, personally, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like being free and being simplistic, simplistic enough is not, an, I feel like it's just, that's just not enough to make a game popular. I mean, there are a lot of games that are like that that aren't popular. Oh, wait, Arnas talked about us Fortnite. So, if you guys can give... So, question today is, do you think there's another element to Fortnite that, make, that makes it a very popular game? Because I feel like there has to be something else. And, no, you don't put dance... Don't put because the dances are funny as an emote, okay? As, as a pro, okay? Because that's... Because that's, that's, most of the emote... Most of the dances come... Don't come from Fortnite. Except for stuff like the Orange Justice, which, uh, which you better bow down to in the comments or else I'll kill you. <clears throat> yes but that's really it and of course but of course the big promise the one i've been promising all of you for you guys for all my friends big one uh we're going to talk about why splatoon 2 is better than fortnite i like fortnite fortnite's a decent game i know there are definitely people who only hate it because it's popular if you hate a game only because it's popular, no matter what game it is, even if I think it's trash, you should never do that because it's stupid and it makes you look like a hypocrite and an idiot and some guy who just wants their opinion to be mimicked by everyone because you think we're robots, even though we're not. We're humans, not robots. Okay, that's what. Save that for twenty thirty. Save that for thirty twenty or something. I don't care. But personally, I believe Splatoon Two is the better game. Now, a lot of people compare Fortnite Splatoon Two, ironically, because like. First off, they first came out around the same time, because like July 2017 or like September, around that time. And uh, personally, I prefer Splatoon 2 because, well, first first off, I feel like Splatoon 2 just has more. Splatoon 2 just has more. I feel like, yes, Fortnite's simplistic. You can have some fun. It can be fun, if, especially with friends. But, but, but like, <laughs> sorry, my bad. But like Splatoon 2, it's just, fun regardless like it's just a lot of fun it has more stuff in my opinion and of course you don't have to pay for v bucks and while sometimes that yes that does i understand that paying for paying for all three starter packs and a battle pass costs less than splatoon 2 
And of course, you know, Octo Expansion $20. Uh, but still, I do believe Splatoon 2 is a better game. But yeah. Uh, I don't really, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to talk about it all too much. If you want me to make like a follow-up video talking about like more about Splatoon 2 is better, let me know. Because uh, I feel like there's a lot more I can talk about. But I feel like I'm, I'm, I, this video is getting a bit too long. So yeah, I, I'll just leave it there. I just think Splatoon 2 is a better game. I mean, Fortnite's still decent, but I think Splatoon 2 is just better. And, uh, yeah. That's really all I got. Uh, yeah, anyways, uh, that's about it. So, uh, yeah, um, a big thing. Now, as I said in the beginning, I, 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 I want to get this video out before Season 6, because if I didn't, I would have way too much in my plate. Let me know uh, if you want me to do a follow-up to this when season six comes out uh if if you want me to if i do as follow up it won't be like day one of season six it will be like i'll wait for like maybe a couple weeks maybe like three to four weeks so if you want me to do a follow up that's about it also uh uh also in case you're wondering yes i did do a fortnite live stream i probably won't do another fortnite live stream until maybe again season six comes out probably so yeah and uh, in case you guys want to join me for that, uh, my my username, my Epic Games username is, is Yellowcap Alex. I play on Nintendo Switch, so rest in peace, any of you PS4 viewers. Anyways, guys, thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, do the usual and take care. God, this video was so long. I, I need to go. I, I need to go do a battle royale. I need to go do something. <laughs> ow! Ow! God! Oh no! Help me! I got downed. Somebody needs to revive me. One of my teammates needs to revive Oh, no. I, I died anyways. Oof. Well, can we get a rip in the chat? Ugh. Help. Thank you for watching.